Hi, this is Chris McKaylee, and I wanted to bring you some legislative lingo on today's video cast. It probably doesn't come as a surprise to you, but those who work in and around California State Capitol use a number of terms or lingo to describe different aspects of the legislative process. The following is a short compilation of some of the more common terms used in the legislative process. The first is 28.8, which actually refers to Senate Rule 28.8, which basically allows the Senate Appropriations Committee Chair to waive a hearing of a bill that is otherwise keyed fiscal committee by the Legislative Council and report that fiscal bill out of committee and directly to the floor because it's been deemed to have little state impact. It's often used as a verb. My bill was 28 aided out of appropriations or my bill was 28 aided to the floor. The same with uh, Senate rule 29.10, usually referred to as 2910 and assembly rule 77.2. Again, sometimes used as verbs. My bill was 2910 back to rules committee or my bill was 77 two back to the policy committee. 2910 is the Senate rule that allows the Senate Rules Committee to refer a bill to a policy committee for a hearing if the bill has been substantially amended either on the floor or in the other house. Similarly, 77.2 is the assembly rule that allows the speaker to refer a bill to a policy committee for a, bill, for a hearing if the bill's been substantially amended on the floor or in the other house. <clears throat> across the desk. Uh, historically, the bills and amendments were physically passed across the assembly desk or the Senate desk from the author or their staff to the assembly or Senate desk staff. Now it's primarily done electronically, particularly during COVID time. But across the desk means when bills are either introduced or amendments are made, they're placed across the desk which is the official act of either introducing the bill or making amendments to an existing bill. A BCP, <clears throat> this is the acronym for the term budget change proposal in the budget process. It's a document that's prepared by a state agency and the Department of Finance and is used to propose and document any budget changes to maintain the existing level of service or to change a level of service. Again, almost universally referred to as BCP rather than budget change proposal. Uh, blue pencil or line item veto. This is the constitutional authority uh, of the governor to line item veto and an appropriation. And that appropriation can be in the budget bill, a uh, budget bill junior or a bill making an appropriation and the constitutional authority is to either reduce or eliminate an item of appropriation, a caucus. Well, there are two types of caucuses. You can either refer to a group of legislators like the Democrat or Republican caucuses, or it's the private meeting of a political party. Uh, the Democrat and Republican parties in both the assembly and the Senate uh, both meet privately, uh, just amongst themselves, and that is also a caucus. Chaptering out or chapter out, this is a problem that occurs when two bills amend the same code section, and when they do, and there's conflict between the language, the earlier chaptered bill is chaptered out by the later or the last enacted or chaptered bill. There's also what's called a companion bill. This doesn't happen too often in the California legislature, but it's when two bills that are identical in wording are introduced in each house of the legislature. This was uh, done most recently in the uh, 1920 uh, legislative session. There was Senate Bill 54 and the companion bill, Assembly Bill 1080. There's also what we call district bills, which is a measure that was introduced by a legislator for his or her uh, district. It's generally a bill that only affects a particular legislative district, hence why we call it a district bill. 
A double jointing is a type of amendment that addresses the problem of chaptering out. Uh, this ensures that one bill, the later enacted bill, does not chapter out the provisions of the earlier enacted bill. And again, that's double jointing. The effective date as opposed to the operative date is generally January 1 of the following year, uh, unless it's one of four types of bills, such as an urgency clause or a tax levy that takes effect immediately upon enactment and chaptering. Of course, the operative date could be January 1 as well, but usually an operative date, if there is one, would be a different specified date when the bill's provisions are operative. Think of effective date as when the bill is on the books. Engrossment and uh, counter that to enrollment, two different things. Engrossment is the processing of a bill both after it's been amended and the final processing by the clerk of each house before it's sent to the governor. And it's basically checked that all the amendments were made and that there aren't any, uh, for example, spelling errors or other things versus the enrollment period. The enrollment period is the point at which the bill is enrolled and sent to the governor for final action. Fiscal committee. Um, it's technically either the appropriations or budget committees in the assembly and Senate, but we generally refer to the fiscal committee as the appropriations committee, even though they don't technically do appropriations there. Those are done by the respective budget committees, but the fiscal committee determination is made by the Office of Legislative Council under joint rule 10.5. A gut and amend. This refers to when amendments remove the entire current contents of a bill and replace them with different provisions, which are usually unrelated to the original contents of the bill. This raises the issue of germaneness, uh, whether or not the amendments, the new amendments are germane to the original contents of the bill. They're required to do so, but that rule can be waived by a majority of the members of either house a bill that is held in committee. This means when it's not voted upon usually, uh, it basically was likely to fail passage. And so a vote actually isn't ended up being taken on the measure. Hijacking, this doesn't happen very often in the California legislature, but it basically refers to where uh, another legislator takes over a colleague's bill in the legislative process amends different language into the bill and uses it as their own. That's why it's been hijacked. Hostile amendments. These are amendments that are proposed by another legislator, either in committee or on the floor, that are not supported by the current bill's author. That's why they're hostile to the bill's author. The inactive file. This refers to bills being placed on the inactive file on either the assembly floor or the Senate floor. And it can be done either at the author's request or because of a procedural motion or because a bill has been passed on file too many times on the assembly or Senate floor. The journal. That refers to the Senate Daily Journal or the Assembly Daily Journal, which is the official record of the proceedings of either the Senate or the Assembly may revise, that refers to the governor's issuance of revisions of his or her January budget proposal after the April tax receipts are available and whether the governor revises the revenues that are being expected and therefore uh, increasing or decreasing the expenditures that were proposed in the governor's January 10 budget submission to the legislature. A mock-up. A mock-up is an unofficial copy of a bill with proposed amendments. Uh, they can be done by interested parties or other legislators or, of course, the author of the bill. Move a call or moving a call. This is a parliamentary procedure that basically delays the announcement, the final announcement of a vote on a measure either in committee or on the floor. Uh, the call has to be lifted. Uh, and a final vote to be recorded before a committee or floor session can adjourn or complete itself. Omnibus bill, that is a piece of legislation that contains 
numerous provisions, which is why we call it omnibus. On call, this is related to moving a call. A bill is on call when it usually doesn't have enough votes for passage. The bill is placed on call to give the author or proponents additional time to garner those extra votes needed. But sometimes bills are placed on call because a number of legislators are absent from committee or they're absent from the floor session and we want to give them an opportunity to come back to the committee or floor to cast a vote before the final bill is a final vote is announced. A pass on file. That's when a bill author requests that the bill that's pending on the assembly or the Senate floor to not be taken up but still retain its place on the assembly daily file or the Senate daily file. To put over. Put over is uh, when a measure is put over to a subsequent hearing, and that can be done either at the request of the author or the committee itself, or obviously the committee chair. Reconsideration, which can be granted just once. Reconsideration occurs when a measure or a motion has not been successful. The author can make a motion uh, to reconsider that bill or that motion to give them an, uh, another opportunity to either get the motion passed or get the bill passed. A rule waiver. Uh, usually it's actually we suspend a rule, but there are a few instances where a rule is actually waived. But in most instances, rule waiver is the term that is used even when it's technically a rule is being requested to be suspended. And that's basically where a rule is temporarily waived or suspended. The sponsor. The sponsor of the bill is the legislator or the individual or the interest group who developed the piece of legislation, who advocates for its passage, who brought the idea to the legislator. Uh, differentiate this from the author of the bill. And please note that at the federal level in the US Congress, uh, members of the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate use the word sponsor to denote the author of the bill. So in D.C., the author is the sponsor. In California, the author is the author and the group backing it who brought the idea originally is the sponsor. A spot bill, that can, a spot bill is opposed to an intent bill. An intent bill sets forth just a one sentence statement that it's the intent of the legislature to enact a bill to do something. But a spot bill is uh, likewise a placeholder bill like an intent bill, but a spot bill makes a non-substantive change to the, to the law. And so it's a placeholder awaiting uh, amendments at a future date. A sunset. Sunset is the provision in the bill that specifies a date when the statutory provision is actually repealed and is therefore no longer uh, the law. We call it sunsetting the statute and therefore it is a sunset date. Suspense file, uh, this is the process used in the Senate and Assembly Appropriations Committees for holding all the bills over a certain dollar threshold and then casting votes at one single session prior to the fiscal committee deadline for all the bills that are pending on the suspense file taken off calendar. Um, this means when a measure is no longer on a committee's upcoming hearing agenda, it means it was taken off calendar. Third house, this is the term used for lobbyists or governmental advocates. A two-year bill, which is called a carryover bill uh, in the constitution. This is where a bill was introduced in the first year, which is the odd year in its house of origin, and it hasn't cleared that house in the first year, it can carry over to January 31st of the second year, but by January 31st has to have made it over to its second house, otherwise it fails passage in its house of origin. Urgency clauses, uh, this is the provision in a bill that provides specified reasons why the bill has to take effect immediately upon being enacted. Um, and that is a provision uh, found in the Constitution and the reason why it uh, contains a statement explaining what that urgency is. Veto, of course, the governor has the power to veto a bill, which means the governor prevents the bill from uh, becoming a statute. 
And then the last one I have for legislative lingo is a WARF, an acronym for without reference to file, W-O-R-F. A bill that's not listed in the official agenda on the assembly or Senate floors, that is the assembly daily file or the Senate daily file, can be taken up without reference to file, meaning the bill was warfed, another verb, uh, which is a suspension of the orders of the day and it's done by a majority vote. There are obviously dozens more uh, different terms that are used in the California legislative process. Certainly a lot of those that are associated with the budget process, but these are the, some of the most common uh, uh, terms or phrases that you hear around the legislative process here in the state of California.